It's not about how much rain you get, it's about how much rain you keep. Howdy folks, this is Tim Rankin on the Farm Tough channel. And it's time for our daily cow move. These chickens are laying like crazy right now. This is why I don't worry about weeds anymore. I'm a rental farm manager for Polyface. Been working on something today, so figured y'all might like to see it. Howdy folks. Wanted to do a little video about a couple things I've been learning lately. We're in a pretty bad drought. Under four inches of rain in the last six months. That's not normal. Um, usually, usually we've had about 15 or 20 inches of rain by now. So, just wanted to talk about a couple things. The importance of having a lot of organic matter in your soil so you can hold water. Um, I know I read it in a book a while back, but somebody said it's not about how much rain you get, it's about how much rain you keep. And our grass, at least up until the last month or so, was still growing on water that we had from last winter. It was slow, but it kept growing and growing, even though even though we weren't getting really any rain, and when we did get rain, it was like a tenth or something, which barely takes the dust down. It's not about how much rain you get, it's about how much you keep. If you only get rain in the winter, and and that's what your climate is, don't be whining and complaining about the guy a few hundred miles down the road that gets rain all year, because if he doesn't keep his water, he's not any better off than you. It's about how much water you keep. If it just runs off, it's no good. It's what you keep in your soil. That has made a huge difference for us this year compared to our neighbors because of the amount of organic matter we have, because of our managed mob stocking, where we manage our cows really closely and move them every day, we have so much more holding capacity. And then the next thing is the importance of summer stockpile. In the spring, your grass is gonna take off and, and then it's gonna drop off in the heat of the summer. And then usually in the fall, it's gonna pick up a little bit. So what a lot of people do is just cut that for hay, cut the, cut the spring excess for hay and store it in that, and that's what feeds their cows in the winter. But it, you can also, and you should also, stockpile some of that and not graze it. And what happened this, this spring and summer is that we had our spring growth, it was a little bit slow because we were short on rain, took off and then it just has sloped down, 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 down to basically nothing now. Um, if we hadn't had stockpiled all that extra, and I, which what I did was I had about three or four pastures that I either grazed really lightly once and then didn't touch again or didn't graze at all. If I wouldn't have saved that, I would be in big trouble now. Um, and I still have about 20 more acres of that to go. And then we're, we're coming back to grass that we've grazed a couple times and it's only about this tall because we're not getting any rain. But if I wouldn't have saved that summer stockpile, all I would have is grass that was really short. And I would be in really big trouble. We would, we would not have enough feed. Um, so keep that in mind when starting in the spring, um, give yourself a little safety net there and save up for some dry summer months because you could really need it. Manage your grass so you get some good stockpile there. And and maybe you won't need it, maybe maybe you have way too much and you can cut it for hay or, or you can save it um, way into the way into the summer and let your other grass get get going better but that has been a real a real lifesaver for us this year is is what we left behind and and didn't graze very hard then the other thing is over at polyface i don't know if you you've probably watched some videos from over there they're backed up against the mountain and we've built a bunch of ponds there on the mountain and, and so we have they have a plentiful water supply uh we do a lot of irrigation and stuff. Um, they're running, I think, K-line irrigation systems over there right now. And that's keeping the grass going. That's a great resource. Unfortunately, over here on this farm, we're high and dry. We don't have any ponds. Um, we're up on top of like a limestone deposit. So we have sinkholes and caves and stuff. 
Um, everybody's tried to build a pond, sinkholes just open up and all the water drains away. Uh, so all we have is one little spring over in the corner and a well. So we really can't irrigate at all. So it all comes down to how well I manage my cows and how, how good my grass grows based on that. Thanks for watching. Good morning, folks. Just wanted to say thanks to our sponsor, S&H Farmhouse. It's a small startup company by three brothers. The oldest is about half my age. So I'm really excited to help a little business like this get started, um, help these youngsters get started. They sent us some homemade buttermilk biscuit mix, and it is really good. I highly recommend their biscuit mix. Check out the other stuff. They sell some tea and some candles. Stuff to help your farmhouse um, smell better and obviously um, help you have some better food. Keep you hard at work on your farm. Anyway, you can go check them out at snhfarmhouse.com. Help them get started. Thanks.